In this video I will cut the redesigned plates for my CNC machine using a CTOR and begin the process of replacing the original plywood plates. I built my CNC machine with plywood plates at first to keep the cost down, but also to test if the design was sturdy and accurate despite the material of the plates. I always intended to replace the machine plates with ones made from more durable material and I decided to go with a C tool mainly because it would be a lot quicker to cut than aluminium. My first step was to cut the larger 500 by 500 mm sheet of 12mm thick C tool into smaller sections so they could fit on my current machine's wasteboard. I don't have a nesting module on the software that I am using so I had to do this manually by moving pieces around within the software until I was happy with the amount of waste. Okay I've secured it down with three mending brackets. I'm going to draw out the holes first for each plate that's going to fit on this piece of the seat hole and then I'll screw it down using these cup washers and screws uh, so each individual piece is held then I'll remove these and cut the remaining uh, cuts out. This method allows me to cut pieces a lot closer together and without having to worry about larger clamps getting in the way of the tool paths. Can't tell how well you can see this but there's a lot of different size holes. And now what I'm going to do is start securing stuff down. One, two, three, four. I should be able to take these off now. Because I set my origin position at the beginning, I could return to that point, load new G-code files and make follow-on cuts cutting the plates out in stages. I've secured each piece, there will be four pieces that I'll be cutting out from this one block of a seator with two screws and cup washers each. Okay, it's cut out. A bit of dust has built up. Uh, the traction isn't as strong as I'd like. Before unscrewing the pieces, I checked that all the holes had cut out correctly and also fitted a few bearings within their allotted recesses. I also physically checked the plates were identical by placing them over one another. It feels like it lines up. I am cutting the second piece of acetal now. I use the same method of screws and cup washers to secure the material. It's worth mentioning between cuts I gently sanded any raised bumps on the MDF wasteboard caused by the screws. This will help the acetal lie flat against the wasteboard. Once this had completed, I decided to check the temperature of the CNC machine by using this laser temperature measurer. I've been cutting on and off for a couple hours now and I'm just curious. It's over 30. The results are good on the machine, but not too bad in the enclosure considering I haven't put any extra cooling fans inside yet. Mm. I then cut the two sides of the gantry. I didn't redesign this part to use smaller V-wheels. Gonna have to clear up the back a little bit but it's looking really good really nice material to work with if you've never tried halloumi board I really recommend it so now I'm going to do this plate here I'm now cutting the z-axis plate this will be a little more complicated because I'm going to change over to a larger 8 mm bit to area clear trench for the spindle mounting parts the spindle mount will be cut from a 250 by 250 mm sheet of 16mm thick acetal. 
I measured this material with a vernier caliper and changed the dimensions of the trench to compensate. Okay, here goes the last cut. I added about half a millimetre to this so the fit wouldn't be super tight. As long as the trenches are parallel, this will help me fit the spindle mounting part so the spindle is square to the plate. So that's 16.1. That's the same. The depth is pretty good, it's 2.2. Wow. Okay, that's what I put in. Leading all over the place. The question is, will this piece fit? in there, it does that way, but this side here doesn't. So I can either leave it like this and make sure that I position uh, the cuts so that the uh, pieces that will fit into the grooves are on, on the thinner side, or I can quickly run another tool path while I still got the uh, origin set what time is it? Do I have the time? Uh, I don't think I've got the time to do that. So what I'm going to do is get some tape. So that's okay. That's okay. It's not okay. Thin and thick. That's the final piece. For now, um, I need to decide what I'm going to do about the spindle mounting uh, plates and in particular the hole for the extraction tube. Um, the redesign um, files on Fusion 360 have this a little further towards the spindle just to make it look a little more squat. Obviously if I cut that out I'll have to re make the bloody dust shoe. Uh, I'm not sure if I can really be bothered to do that. These are the spindle mounting parts. I decided to change the location of the extraction port so the dust shoe will also have to change. Okay, I took the first set out just because the tabs didn't hold that well. And I was worried they were gonna uh, move around. Let's just test this fits. I made the opening for the spindle exactly 80 millimeters, but when I originally cut the plywood plates, I had shrunk this by half a mil or so. Annoyingly, the spindle is a little loose now. I don't particularly want to reorder new material to cut this out again, so what I could do is either wrap some captain tape around the area of the spindle which I'll be clamping against, or glue some neoprene tape onto the smaller clamping section of the mount, although it is notoriously difficult to glue anything to a seatle. I could even drill and tap some holes through the side of the mounting pieces for flat flange grub screws, which I can use to tighten against the spindle. It's not ideal, but I have subsequently changed the Fusion 360 and DXF files associated with this build in case anyone decides to cut these plates out. I'll make the mistake so you don't have to. Uh, before I forget, this is a tiny wafer of a seed or an off cut that was left between two of the parts. I think it was something like that. Um, and I just didn't realize how strong this material was until I, I picked this up and instinctively went to snap it and I just literally cannot break it. I actually think maybe the thickness of the plates was a bit overkill for how tough this material is. You know, this was a bit of MDF or birch ply, just doing that would break it. I decided that I needed to assemble as many of the plate sections as I could before dismantling and upgrading the CNC machine. If it turns out I made a mistake along the way and need to recut something, well it would be very difficult with the machine in pieces. I am waiting for some wheels to come through the post but I was able to use parts from a C-beam linear actuator that I originally bought to upgrade the X-carve to test the machining and mock up a Y-plate. I use my bench vise to push the eccentric spacers into their openings. And for each wheel I placed either an eccentric or quarter inch spacer, a precision shim, a wheel and then a locking nut. I also used washers on the outside of the plates to make sure the machine screws didn't protrude too far and potentially scratch the aluminium C-beam. Oh. 
There are two types of wheel which include darin and polycarbonate. Some of the polycarbonate wheels actually fractured over time so I prefer to use darin. I'm just looking down the aluminium extrusion while I turn the eccentric spacer. Essentially what you want is um, to be able to slide the plate along but to stop the wheel turning if you press your thumb or, thumb or finger against it. Um, you don't want it any tighter than that because then it will start to push the plate and the machine screws out. What I found originally when I built the first machine I used larger wheels at the top and uh, even though I changed the spacings uh, as I saw other people doing them and as I was advised I was still not getting um, the wheels lining up as they should it just makes more sense to stick with one type of wheel uh, and to remove that problem from the from the build and the feet lift the Y plate high enough so this doesn't get in the way anywhere. Okay, I thought everything was going well and I suddenly noticed that there is an opening here that's missing. When I was trying to work out where this was going to go, I ended up creating a new sketch and somehow I forgot there were two separate sections and I overlooked it. It's quite faint, but I've just cut the outline of this shape so I can pop it on top and use that to then do the next cut. That was lucky, it came out quite easily. All the wheels and parts, bearings and so on have arrived. So I'm going to put them on to the different plates. To speed up the process I use a vise to press four bearings at a time. I will do one side first, flip them over, place the precision shim between the two bearings before completing the wheel assembly. I then made up the z-axis plate. Annoyingly two of the outer wheels on one side were just shy of the aluminium extrusion. I think while adjusting the eccentric spacers within the c-beam the plate shifted ever so slightly and I didn't anticipate this in the 3D model. I think AVE has a term for the type of tolerance I'm working at here and you're welcome to guess what that is in the comment section below. Let's just say you couldn't cut a slice of cheese this thin but you're welcome to try and send me pictures. So I had to reorder some more 12 mm acetal and I decided to also buy some 16 mm as well to recut the spindle mounting parts. So I've just cut a new plate out like this one here. Slight difference is that these holes have been spaced in about half a mil each. Uh, and that will just mean that the wheels on the eccentric spacers will be able to make contact with the C-beam. That's going to be a problem. I need to countersink these and use some uh, other machine screws. Or I could buy some of these low-profile machine screws. I also assembled the gantry. I thought I could make some PTFE washers to shift one side of the wheels across so all sat properly on the aluminium extrusion. But in practice this resulted in a gap forming on the opposite side. I also tried replacing the combination of precision shim, spacer and two shims between the wheels with some 3 8 of an inch or 9.5mm spacers which I had from the X-carve but they weren't any good either.
If I had an engineer's lathe, I could just make some the correct size, but alas, I don't. I decided I should try assemble as much as I could before I dismantled the CNC machine. This including cutting out a negative of the smaller spindle mounting part which holds the extraction tube which I could use to hold the piece while drilling its mounting holes. It does feel quite close to the edge, but the hole is only going to be five millimeters. I also drilled and tapped the opposite parts, including the mounting hole to the Z axis plate. Just put a bit of captain tape there and it's a lot tighter now. You know, if I really, really go for it, I can twist it, but that's pretty good. There is a little bit of a gap here. I feel like maybe the material opened up a bit after I'd cut it. So I took the tape off and it feels pretty good. It's lining up okay. I mean really it's all about this section here clamping downwards. Uh, I would have preferred it if it was a little bit tighter here. You can see a bit of light. The top is nice and flat. No light is coming through. I didn't realise how translucent this stuff was. This one I'm going to draw all the way through. So previously I drilled the uh, holes before tapping with a 4.2 mil bit for the 5 mil, but this time I've actually used a 4 mil in the pillar drill just so the thread is a little bit more pronounced. One of the M5 clamping machine screws lost its thread, so I had to replace those with M6 bolts. Tapping holes with a drill, even if you go slowly, is possibly not the best method. Okay, that feels good. I was worried the spindle would be loose in the mount, but the bolts applied a lot more pressure than I could by hand, and it seemed to hold quite well. So I'm just putting some 16mm flange machine screws through this plate and it will hold the z-axis. In the next video I will begin dismantling the CNC machine with the plywood plates and replacing those with the acetal ones that I've just cut. And as usual, don't forget to sacrifice a thumb to the algorithm gods and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks again. Thank you.